The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline, so you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G-Wiz, which means it's perfectly safe for folks and families of all ages to enjoy with Cheese Whiz. I'm Jack Ward, and you're listening to Mutual Presents, our look to the old-time radio of the original Mutual Broadcasting Network, found on the Mutual Audio Network YouTube channel. This week, we return to Saturday Story Circle's Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. That never gets old. With episodes 8 and 9 of Jack Armstrong and the Luminous Dragon Eye Ring. So turn back those clocks as we return to the days of classic Mutual. Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. Wheaties, breakfast of champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Say... Did you ever look at a list of foods recommended for the training diet of champion athletes? Well, I can tell you one thing. Most of those training diets your favorite athletes follow are pretty sure to include that nourishing basic cereal grain of ours, whole wheat. Wheaties are made of whole wheat, you know. Yes, those tasty Wheaties flakes are real 100% whole wheat, brimming with a kind of nourishment an athlete can use every morning. Now, I'm telling you this because I've just discovered a mighty surprising fact. Listen. Do you know that Wheaties give you lots more valuable bodybuilding nourishment than you may get from other foods made of whole wheat? It's true. Other so-called whole wheat foods may give you only a part of the good nourishment you get from Wheaties. Yes, Wheaties are extra nourishing. Be sure and remember that. Wheaties are extra nourishing. Those toasted flakes with a champion flavor give you every bit of the important vitamins and minerals found in the original whole wheat grain from which Wheaties are made. Now I'll bet you're asking how this extra nourishment in Wheaties fits into your own personal training diet. Well, here are the facts, straight from headquarters. Wheaties give you all of whole wheat's essential vitamin B1 for good appetite. Wheaties give you all of whole wheat's vitamin G to help you grow, and all of wheat's phosphorus and calcium for sound bones and teeth, and iron for good red blood. Then, you'll want to remember this. Wheaties are a regular gold mine of that important thing called food energy. It's this important food energy that helps an athlete keep on the go without a letdown. Now, when you know these facts... Isn't it easy to see why Wheaties are recommended for an athlete training diet and for your own personal training diet every morning? I'm telling you, you'd better string along with the hundreds of champion athletes who eat Wheaties and like them. Get yourself an orange and blue package of Wheaties right away. And now, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. The two-masted schooner Spindrift is at anchor in San Francisco Bay on the eve of its dangerous voyage to the Philippine Islands and the Sulu Sea. It is going there in search of a yacht which sank on a hidden reef with its precious cargo of uranium. Already the Spindrift is a marked vessel. For yesterday she was visited by a member of a reckless gang which is determined to locate and steal this rare uranium. Uncle Jim is on his way back from town where he has received something of vital importance. Jack and Billy, 
still excited over their strange encounter with the schooner's visitor, are waiting impatiently on the dock for Betty while their skiff bobs up and down at the pier. Listen. Gee, Billy, Betty's taking a long time to get here from the airport. I'll say, Jack. Maybe she's making the most of one last night ashore in a nice warm house. She'll be crowded on the spindrift, all right, cooped up in that little cabin of hers. Well, Jack, by the time Uncle Jim and you and I get our stuff stowed away in the main cabin, there won't be much room for us either. Well, there'll be enough. There's lots of room on deck to stretch our legs. Yeah, and lots of storage space in the hold. I didn't see how Uncle Jim could possibly take his brand new auto gyro along until I saw what a big hold the boat has. We're going to need every bit of that storage space, Billy. It's not such a long hop to Hawaii, but it's a mighty long stretch from there to the Sulu Sea. Yeah, and we'll have to have room for that diving equipment we're going to pick up in Manila. No use finding the sunken yacht if we can't get down to her and recover that uranium. It looks as though we'll need the protection of the U.S. Navy to get that precious stuff back home, Billy. Jumping Jiminy, yes, Jack. Well, here we haven't even started on the trip yet, and first Blackbeard shows up at Hudson. And then this strange foreigner with the smooth tongue and the quick pistol shows up on the spindrift. What do you suppose he was up to in the first place, Jack? I don't know. He certainly didn't expect us to drop in on him. And yet I've checked the boat from stem to stern, and I can't figure out what he was doing when we arrived. Well, you can bet your boots we're going to see some more of them before we shove off. Say, here comes Betty now. Bet you that taxi driver gives her a real scare. Yeah. Oh, hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. Oh, hello. I thought we were going to drive right off the pier and into the bay. Someday his brakes won't hold, and he will. I'll pay the driver. Oh, thanks, Jack. Give me your bag, Betty. I'll put it in the skip. Oh, here. Thanks. Okay. Now, tell me what happened yesterday. Uncle Jim said this morning that you'd had a bit of excitement, but he rushed away before I could learn what happened. Get in the skip first, Betty, and we'll tell you as we row out. You and Billy sit in the stern seat. Okay. Here, Betty, take it easy. I'll take my hand. All right. There you go. Uh, Uncle Jim looked worried, and he wouldn't say much, so I knew something important had happened. Well, you remember that Billy and I went aboard to see who was visiting the Spindrift and what he was doing? Yeah. Well, he made some noise, and he came on deck before we could find out what he was up to. Oh, Jack, did he... did he act rough? Not then. He had some crazy story about wanting to buy the boat. But, Betty, he did the strangest thing. He looked at Jack's hands as though he wanted to bite them off. My hands were in my pockets. And he pulls a jujitsu on me. Gosh, but he was quick. And gets my hands out and looks at him. Oh, Billy, whatever would he want to do that for? Oh, wait a second. Then Uncle Jim comes aboard, and he looks at Uncle Jim's hands the same way. We finally figured he was looking for a certain ring. A ring, Jack? Well, why should Uncle he... Uncle Jim had it figured out. Remember that token that the dying sailor said he was sending from Professor Loring? Oh, yes, of course. But Uncle Jim never got it. No, not yet. But Uncle Jim figured that this gang knew of that token and were awfully anxious to get hold of it. It must have some terribly important meaning. But how did Uncle Jim know it was a ring, Jack? He didn't know. But this strange visitor was obviously looking for a ring. So Uncle Jim figured the token must be a ring of some kind. Oh, but what happened then? Oh, oh, Jack, watch out. There's a big motorboat coming this way. She'll miss us. Watch out for her wash. It'll rock us a bit. Well, that was fun. But what happened then? Listen, this is good. Uncle Jim pulled out a slip for registered mail for a Philippine package at the post office. And quick as a flash, the fellow pulled a gun on us, took the slip, cut loose our skiff so we couldn't follow him, and rowed back to shore just as fast as he could. Oh, then he got the package. Not much he didn't. Uncle Jim was too smart for it. You see, Uncle Jim wanted to find out for sure if this fellow was really part of the gang. So that registered slip was a fake. It was just an old receipt. Oh, oh, that's too funny. But it's serious, too, Betty. It shows what we're up against. I never half realized how important that uranium must be. It's got to be important, Betty. Well, it may mean solving the secret of splitting the atom and capturing that tremendous energy locked up in the atom. It must be important if someone's going to all this trouble to find out the location of Professor Loring's sunken yacht. And believe me, Betty, they're not sending out a bunch of thugs to get that information. This chap was educated and a smooth customer, and dangerous. Are you telling me? The way he pulled that jujitsu was certainly something to write home about. Well, that's what happened, Betty. We thought we'd have our hands full keeping that scrap of chart from him. But now it looks as though we'll have a very special ring to hide, too. That is, Jack, if that package comes before we leave. It'll come, Billy. Hey, look, we're almost on the spindrift. Oh, Jack, she's a wonderful-looking boat. She looks like a great white bird, all ready to take off. She is a beauty, isn't she? 
Look at that clean, sharp bow. I'll bet she can cut through the waves. Oh, Spindrift, that is a good name. Look out or you'll bump into it. Here, I'll make fast. Billy, you and Betty climb aboard first. No, okay. Here you go, Betty. Take my hand now. Here, over. Okay. Well, there is lots of room on deck. But, Jack, I never saw so much rope in my life. Not rope, Betty, but line. Remember, most ropes on a ship are called either lines or sheets. Sheets? Yeah, the sheets are the ropes that pull in the sails. <laughs> well, I'll learn. Give me time. Oh, look, there's Uncle Jim on the dock. Shall we go back in and get him? No, he has his own skiff. He's coming out. I wonder what he found out in town, Billy. Oh, we all know soon enough. While he's rowing out, let's take Betty below and show her the ship. Here, Betty, we'll show you the main cabin first. Of room. <laughs> Lots of room for a weekend cruise, Betty. But when you figure we've got to have enough supplies on board for several months, the cabin sort of shrinks. And how? We've got to find room for a chart table and navigating instruments and a little radio desk. Radio? And... On a sailboat? Well, the radio is the most important thing on the boat, Betty. We need it to pick up time signals when we shoot the sun and to get radio bearings on our position and all sorts of things. Yeah, and we've got a special generator on board just to make electricity for the radio and lights. Your cabin's up forward, Betty. It's a bit small, but you'll be comfortable. And forward of that is the forecastle for a crew, if any. We're the only crew, Uncle Jim, Jack, and I. Well, Billy, do you think I'm a paying passenger? <laughs> you can bet you're not. You're the cook. <laughs> and will I have you at my mercy? <laughs> What's that? That must be Uncle Jim. Let's see what Dopey got. Hello, Uncle Jim. Here, throw me your painter and I'll make fast. Thanks, Billy. Okay, got it. No more strange visitors, I hope. Not this time, Uncle Jim. Did you find out anything? Well, I've made arrangements for our supplies. Oh, you're teasing us, Uncle Jim. You know that's not what Jack was talking about. Oh, they've told you everything, I see. You bet we did. Did you find out anything from the police? No, Billy. Neither the police nor the government agents. No one seems to know anything about the identity of our visitor. I looked over all of the photographs in their files, but whoever he is, he's not on their suspect list. Oh, but there's something else you haven't told us, Uncle Jim. I can see it in your eyes. They were always laughing when you're hiding something. Now, Betty, if you don't stop prying into my eyes, I'm going to have to wear blinders. Oh, but, Uncle Jim, there is something else, isn't there? <laughs> yes, there is. Look at this. A slip for registered mail. The token. The token from Professor Loring. Is that it, Uncle Jim? It might be. But of course it is. You don't expect any other registered package, do you? No, Jack, I don't. This package was apparently sent by the Filipino skipper that rescued the sailor. I'm sure it's the token that Professor Loring wanted us to have. Then why don't we go and get it? Yeah, why don't we? Gee, Willikins, I want to see what it is that this gang is so anxious to get. That's just why I didn't rush off to get it, Billy. This gang is so anxious to get their hands on it that I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they had their agents hanging around the main post office waiting for it to arrive. I believe you're right, Uncle Jim. They'll stop at nothing. And they know us by sight, too. At least one of them does. Exactly. If we got that package, they'd see us there, follow us, and we might have a bad time before we shook them off. But how are you going to get it, Uncle Jim? I figure they'll be looking for us at the main post office. So I've already telephoned the postmaster, and he's going to send it down to that little branch post office near these docks. We can get it there. That's a good idea. This gang can't have their men planted at every branch office in the city. When will it be there? Well, it ought to be there by this time. You and Billy can go ashore any time you wish and get it. Use the car I borrowed from the airport. Come on, Billy. What are we waiting for? I'm practically on my way already, Jack. Oh, I'm coming too. If it's a ring, it must be just about a magic ring to make that gang go to so much trouble. You'd better stay here, Betty. We've got a long list of ship supplies to go over. And since you're the cook... Oh, but Uncle Jim, I do want to see what it is. You'll see soon enough, Betty. Be a good soldier now and stay aboard and help me. All right, Uncle Jim. But do hurry, Jack and Billy. I won't be a bit of use to Uncle Jim till you get back. We'll hurry, Betty. We're just as anxious as you are to see what this is all about. Come on, Billy. Into the skiff. Say, do you suppose that package really contains a mysterious ring which Professor Loring is sending to Uncle Jim? And why do you suppose that gang is so terrifically anxious to get hold of it? Do you think they'll be smart enough to be waiting for Jack and Billy at the small post office? If they do, there's sure to be an exciting time ahead for those two before they get back to the boat. So listen in, all of you, at the same time tomorrow and see what happens to Billy and to Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Now, I'm leaving the proposition squarely up to you. 
If it's a real champion athlete's breakfast you want, one that's tops on plenty of football training tables this time of year, be sure to ask for Wheaties. A big bowl full of Wheaties with lots of milk and a glass of fruit juice. Any day and every day in the year, that's your breakfast of champions. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try? This is Franklin McCormick saying goodbye until tomorrow for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, breakfast of champions, who have just presented another episode of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boys. The best breakfast food in the land. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shower TV stand. Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. Wheaties, breakfast of champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Right now, I'm going to ask you a question that only you can answer. And every fellow and girl who is interested in sports will have to face this question and answer it honestly and truthfully. How about it? Are you the kind of person all the rest of the crowd looks to for leadership? Are you always, always ready to play the game the best of your ability and show your best winning performance when you're called on? Well, if you're not, I think it's time for you to do some mighty serious thinking. You see... The minute you get the idea that you can play games like a champion without working and training and practicing to make the most of your natural ability, you're pretty sure to be licked at the start. Now, what you want to do is follow the good example of the really great athletes, men like Jimmy Fox in baseball, or lots of the other famous champions of other sports you've heard of. The first thing you do is get in training. I know your own school coach will tell you that training helps make practice easier. And, of course, it's by practice that you develop natural ability and the elements of leadership. You can see for yourself, then, it's training you want, first of all. And I can tell you something right now. Lots of champion athletes and many of the greatest coaches in sport put their okay on the three training rules of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy, as one of the very best training programs a fellow or girl can follow. Now, here's the system. First... Get lots of fresh air, sleep, and exercise. Second, use plenty of soap and water every day to help steer clear of germs caused by dirt. And third, eat a real athlete's training breakfast in the morning. Help yourself to a big tasty bowl full of Wheaties, those nourishing flakes of real whole wheat. Wheaties with lots of milk or cream and a glass of fruit juice. That's a genuine breakfast of champions you should be eating regularly. Now... There's a breakfast especially designed to give you a big supply of nourishment that belongs in a good training diet. Nourishment that includes all the essential food values of whole wheat and flavor. Well, just you wait until you taste those super delicious Wheaties flakes. I'm telling you, that famous Wheaties flavor is so extra special good, you're probably going to want Wheaties every morning in the year. Now remember... Your Jack Armstrong training program calls for the one and only Wheaties. So be sure to get yourself plenty of Wheaties right away. And now, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. While Uncle Jim and Betty are preparing for the voyage to the Philippines by checking supplies in the schooner Spindrift in San Francisco Bay, Jack and Billy have gone ashore to go to the post office. A small package with a mysterious token is waiting for them. A token from Professor Loring, whose yacht was lost in the Sulu Sea with a precious quantity of uranium on board. An unscrupulous gang is interested in this rare uranium, for it may contain the secret of capturing the vast energy of the atom. And, for some reason yet unknown to Jack and Billy, this gang is interested in this token from Professor Loring, too. Listen. Here's Uncle Jim's car at the curb, this blue coupe. Hop in, Billy. I'll drive. What are you looking for? J just nervous, I guess, Jack. I can't help thinking that maybe somehow that gang found out that Uncle Jim had the package sent to the branch post office. Oh, I don't see how they could have unless they have eyes and ears everywhere. Oh, well, gosh, Jack, I sometimes think they have. But even if they did, what can they do? They can't stop us from getting the package. 
And right here in the city, they'd have a fine chance of pulling any rough stuff. Jack, just being in a city wouldn't stop that crowd. Not when they're playing for such high stakes. Well, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. There's a lot of traffic on the waterfront. How far is that post office? Three blocks down and one to your right. Only four blocks? If they want to hijack the package from us in that distance, they'll have to act fast. And I'll say, we're not letting the grass grow under our feet after we get that thing in our pocket. I'll put it on my finger. So if they take it, they'll have to take me, too. And that is, if it really is a ring. It's a ring, all right. Our foreign friend gave that away. But what a ring it must be. I'll bet Betty is just about right. It must have some sort of secret power to it. It has a secret of some kind, or they wouldn't be going to so much trouble to get it. Here's where you turn, Jack. Almost there, Billy. Keep an eye out for a parking place. Uh, just try and find one. Oh, wait. There's one right in front of the post office. <laughs> I must live right, Billy. Well, in we go. Gee, I hope I haven't lost the notice. Nope. Here it is. Jack, look at that fellow standing by the mailbox with his hat pulled down over his face. Who? The one with his back turned toward us? That's the one. I caught a glimpse of his face before he turned away. And, Jack, it looked an awful lot like the fellow who was aboard the spindrift yesterday. We'll have to find out about that. He's walking away, Jack. Let's get after him. Wait a minute, Billy. What would you do if you caught him? There's nothing we could do. Anyway, he's gone. And we're not going to let him stop us from getting that package. Here's the post office. Here, Billy. This window over here. May I have this package, please? Uh, just a second. Clark doesn't seem a bit excited about it. Why, he acts as though it was just an ordinary package. Well, it is an ordinary package to him, I guess. Here you are. Do I sign here? Yep. Okay. Thanks a million. Come on, Billy. What? It's a package and a letter, Jack. A small package, too. It must be a ring. Open it, Jack, and let's see. Not here, Billy. We don't know who's watching us. Just appear casual and natural and keep your eyes open as we go back to the car. Oh, okay, Jack. But don't hold it in your hands. You bet I won't. It's an inside pocket for this package until we get safely back to the spindrift. Keep an eye out now. Get in the car and we'll head for the dock. Does that chap come back? No, the street's pretty clear. Well, he probably wouldn't be the one to do the rough stuff anyway. Well, I guess that wasn't our foreign friend after all, or he'd have done something by this time. We're not back yet, Billy. So yeah, you better step on it, Jack. Too dangerous, Billy. Too much traffic. Hey, there's an officer behind us. I wonder who he's after. Jumping Jimmy, I bet he's after us. He can't be. I haven't done anything. He is, Jack. He's after us. Here he is. Pull over to the curb, you. Why, officer, what's the matter? You know what's the matter. Speeding. Speeding? Why, well, well, you, you're crazy. Don't get fresh now. That'll only make it worse. Live in town? No. But, officer, I know we weren't speeding. Why, just before we heard your siren, I was looking at my speedometer. Tell it to this sergeant. If you don't live in town, I'll have to take you to the district station. Well, where, where's that? I'll lead you there. Follow me. And no tricks, mind you. If you try to turn away, it'll go all the harder with you. All right. We'll follow you. What a rotten break, Jack. And we weren't speeding at all. Gosh, it's enough to make a fellow see red. I hope the police sergeant believes us. I have much money with me to pay a fine. The officer's turning into the next street. He's watching to see that we follow him. All times to be picked up. When we've got that package from Professor Loring with us, and when everything depends on our getting back to the schooner before that gang can get a hold of us. Wait a minute, Billy. That gives me an idea. How do we know that this whole thing isn't a trap? <gasps> Gosh, you're Willikins, Jack. I hadn't thought of that. Do you suppose... Look at that motorcycle. Does it have a regular police tag on it? Well, it looks like a regular police tag, all right. And he's in the regular uniform, too. That doesn't prove anything. They could make the tag and probably buy the uniform. Let's turn quickly at the next corner. We'd better make sure first. If he is on the level, he'd catch us, and we'd never convince the sergeant that we weren't guilty. But, Jack, if we wait, it may be too late. We'll wait a little and keep our eyes open. If he tries to lead us up any dark alleys, we'll break away. Look, he's pulling up to the curb. He's signaling for us to stop in front of that building. Look sharp, Billy. Can you see any police signs on the building? Mm, there is a sign there. Here's where we stop, all right. I guess it's okay, Jack. Sign says police station, 4th District. Billy, it's a new sign, a brand new sign. It's just been put up. It's a trap, Billy. The whole thing's a trap. Well, why, you're right, Jack. Why, that's not a police building. Step on it. Watch out, Billy. He may try to use his gun. He jumped off his motorcycle, Jack. Oh, good. He tripped over it. I'll cut in ahead of this truck before he gets a chance to do anything. Hold on, Billy. I'm going to take this turn. Okay. Gosh, you made that on two wheels. Is he following us, Billy? I don't see him. Hold on for another turn. There. Holy 
smokes, Jack. Now he won't know which direction we've gone. I'll slow down. Jiminy Crickets, that was a narrow escape, Jack. When we get back to the boat, I'll have to pin a medal on you for quick thinking. Well, it wasn't any too quick. I should have smelled a mouse the moment he stopped us. I knew we weren't speeding. We just got started. Jack, whatever is in that package must be dynamite to somebody. Well, we'll soon find out. We're almost back to the dock now. We did travel. Look, there's Uncle Jim waiting for us. Wonder why he isn't on board the schooner. Hi, Uncle Jim. Thought we left you on the spindrift. So you did, Jack. But for no reason at all, I got worried. I was just about to follow you to the post office. <laughs> no reason at all. Say, you'd be surprised, Uncle Jim. What happened? You both look as if you'd passed through a ringer. Well, we didn't miss it much, Uncle Jim. After we got the package, we got picked up for speeding. Why, Jack, I've always told you... But we you... weren't speeding. And we should have known it was a trick. The officer told us to follow him to the district station. Well, what happened? Well, that Jack got suspicious that he wasn't a real policeman. And when we got to what we thought was the station house, Jack noticed that the sign was a brand new one. Just painted. Well. It was a trap, all right. But I stepped on it, shook off the make-believe policeman, and here we are. Thank heaven for that. Have you got the package? Yeah, here it is. We haven't opened it yet. Move over. I'll get in the car with you. Now we'll see what all the excitement's about. What is it, Uncle Jim? What is it? It's all wrapped up. Here it is. A ring. It is a ring, Uncle Jim. But boy, oh boy, what a ring. It looks as though it's made of ivory. Let's see it. No, Billy, not ivory, I'm sure. And look at the jewel in it. Looks like an emerald. I never saw an emerald so brilliant before. And look, Jack, it's engraved. What queer figures. They are queer, aren't they? Let me look at it more closely. How odd. What's odd, Uncle Jim? This engraving. I wonder what these two crocodiles mean. Well, don't forget, Uncle Jim, that this ring came from the Philippines. I know, but the Sulu Sea is surrounded by the Mohammedan Moros. Do the engravings mean anything, Uncle Jim? I don't know. They're symbolic of something, of course. But I'll bet a million that's not why that gang is turning things inside out to get it. It's too soon to tell, Jack. There's more to this than meets the eye. There's a letter, too, that came with it. I thought there might be. Let's see it. Maybe it explains all about the ring and the symbols on it. Mm -hmm. From the same skipper who picked up the sailor from the sunken yacht. Not much in the letter itself. He says that the sailor asked him to forward this ring and message to me from Professor Loring. A message? Like the one he wrote before? I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Dropped on the seat of the car. Oh, it's just a scrap of paper. Doesn't it say anything? Wait a minute. There's some faint writing on it. Looks like pencil writing that's been soaked. It says, Dear Jim, the ring may reach you, or it may fall into other hands, so I dare not tell you more. In any case, it will protect you. Good luck, and carry on. Well, can you beat that? He doesn't tell a thing about the ring. No, Jack. Evidently, he didn't dare, for some reason. You mean, Uncle Jim? I mean, that... there must be a vital secret locked up in that ring somewhere. A secret so important that if it fell into the wrong hands, it would do immeasurable harm. Professor Loring couldn't risk that secret going astray. But he knew, Uncle Jim, that somehow you'd be able to discover the secret and carry on. Well, that's our job, Jack. Maybe the secret is in the engraving. Let's see the ring again, Billy. No, I don't think it's in the engraving. It's in the ring itself. And it's our job to find out what it is before we reach the Sulu Sea. Say, what is the secret of that mysterious ring? It must be pretty important to somebody, at least. Will Uncle Jim and Jack find it out before it's too late? And don't forget they're about to brave the stormy Pacific. That gang isn't apt to let them out of their sight. So listen in, all of you, at the same time tomorrow to the mystery of this remarkable ring and see what happens when the spindrift puts out to sea with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Now, if you find yourself getting hungry when you get home from school in the afternoon, what you want is Wheaties. Help yourself to a big bowl full of those tasty Wheaties flakes with lots of milk. Boy, that's eating. Yes, sir, it's a cinch. You're going to get lots of extra pleasure out of that orange and blue Wheaties package if you'll remember to have Wheaties every afternoon. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? This is Franklin McCormick saying goodbye until tomorrow for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, who have just presented another episode of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. 
Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions. Now, you seem to me to be a connoisseur of the best of radio drama. In which case, make sure you're subscribed to the Monday Matinee feed. There we have our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic and live radio drama. So, yeah, either the main Mutual Audio Network feed for all types and genres of audio drama or the Monday Matinee. And we'll see you there. The Mutual. Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.